In a famous Beatles song, we find the lines, all the lonely people, where do they all come from? All the lonely people, where do they all belong? David Burns referred to loneliness as the world's most common mental health problem. Henry Nguyen described it as one of the most universal sources of suffering. In 1985, sociologist Robert Weiss conducted a landmark study of loneliness in which he estimated that a quarter, 25% of the American population feels extremely lonely at some time during any given month. Dr. Gary Collins writes, loneliness is the painful awareness that we lack close and meaningful contact with others. It involves a feeling of inner emptiness, isolation, and intense longing. Even when they are surrounded by others, lonely people often feel left out, unwanted, rejected, or misunderstood. There may be an intense desire to reach out, but often the lonely person feels frustrated and unable to initiate, continue, or experience a close relationship. Todd Leopold, a Baptist preacher, gives us four examples of loneliness that he is aware of. There's Ernie, a hardworking family man who has always blended in. He's an average guy except that he has a secret that few others know about or even suspect. Lately, Ernie has felt very lonely. What makes it even more difficult is that he doesn't understand why. This is not a normal experience for him. He has a loving family. He has people that he's friendly with at work. He has people that he's friendly with at church. And he's a believing Christian who knows that Jesus will never leave or forsake him. Still, he can't seem to shake this unsettling feeling of loneliness, of being disconnected and alone. Annie is a single adult. She's generally a fun, warm, capable, and bright woman. Annie has a lot to offer the world as a worker, a friend, a mentor, and a volunteer. Most people tell her she'd make a wonderful spouse and mother someday, but her pursuits just seem to lead to one dead end after another. Whether hers is a case of a love never lived or a love lost and seeking to reclaim, the hauntings of her loneliness are the same. Even in church, it seems everyone else already has their own group of friends and they don't need or want any more. Also, it seems nobody knows how to relate to a single woman. George. George is a kind-hearted and sensitive man in midlife. His whole life he has struggled with a, a seemingly natural melancholy constantly feeling lonely and depressed, seeing life's worries while overlooking its blessings. In whispers, people have taken to calling him Droopy Dog or Eeyore. And George knows this, and he struggles greatly with feelings of worthlessness and uselessness. And finally, there's Dear Shirley. Shirley is a wonderful woman in the sunset years of her life, for all but a seemingly distant few of those years, she's lived the ups and downs of life's journey with her beloved soulmate, Fred. Not quite a year ago, God called Fred to his heavenly home. And as a woman of strong faith, she knows that God is there for her, but she's also living with a stark reminder that we all have been created with a need for human companionship, to be with people in whose presence we can relax and be ourselves. And her loneliness has been deepening into depression, and she knows a temptation to just pull away from the world 
and await her own homecoming. I wanted to share that with you this morning to tell you that even in the church, even among God's people, there are a myriad of reasons that people struggle with loneliness. And perhaps, perhaps you can identify with that all too well. Our text this morning is Psalm 25, verses 16 and 17, where the psalmist says this, Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. I am lonely, the psalmist says here. Here's a man that's close to God in new intimate fellowship with the Father. The man who shared these songs in the Psalms that are so dear to us today and express our hearts. And he says, I am lonely. So many people are going through that. There's no denying that many roads of suffering are incredibly lonely ones. The writer of Ecclesiastes reminds us that there is nothing new under the sun. That's true of loneliness as well. From the very beginning, from the dawn of human creation, God said, looking upon that first man, he said, it is not good that the man should dwell alone. You see, right from the start, in our human condition, We struggled with loneliness. It's been part of us. Yet loneliness is not contained to those who are alone. As we've already noted this morning, we can sometimes be even in a crowd of people and be lonely and isolated in the way that we feel. The enemy has been hard at work to take advantage of one's loneliness at every chance that he gets. And so this morning, we'll try to get at the truth about loneliness. We're just going to share a couple things with you this morning. The first of those things is, your loneliness doesn't mean that you are alone. Notice what the scriptures say. Hebrews chapter 13, the last part of verse 5 He himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. Matthew 28, verse 20, it's part of that great commission. The Lord says, lo, I am with you always. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3, in the beginning of of verse 4, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. So even as we're going through loneliness, we're never really alone. God is always there for us. We might feel alone, but God is present And we need to get past the idea that God is present in our lives only when we feel his presence. We're physical creatures with a spiritual nature. And the fact that we are physical means we're subject to tiredness, we're subject to highs and lows, we're subject to illnesses. There's things which affect our body, which affect our outlook, which affect our ability sometimes to perceive God in our lives. Sometimes we're going to feel the exhilaration of God's presence with us. And sometimes we must settle with the knowledge that he is there, even when we feel alone. Loneliness can't overwhelm us when we remind ourselves that he is here and that he does care. And that has to be a conscious effort many times in our lives. But loneliness cannot take us down if we continue to affirm that in the worst moments of our life. He is here. He does 
care. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, talks about how God allowed even his only begotten son, whom he loved, to go down the lonely path for our sake. Hebrews 12, 3, for consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Consider him who walked that lonely road so often in his life so that you don't lose heart in living your life. I want to tell you something this morning and that God has a purpose in what happens for, to us. It's not that God creates bad things to happen to us, but even in the worst of things, God can use them for our good. And that includes loneliness as well. God can use those feelings of being alone to help us. Seeking a way out of loneliness, we may be driven deeper into his word. We might be seeking guidance from him more. We might be moved to be more intense in our prayers as we talk to him because of the loneliness that's descended on our lives. And remember, in our lives, most spiritual growth happens not when we're going through times of ease and comfort where everything is wonderful, but in those times when things are dark and hard and we're facing obstacles, those are the times that we can really grow in our walk with the Lord. Loneliness might be the springboard on which we gain a closer walk with God. Of course, with all trials, including that of loneliness, we are benefited only in turning toward God. Those who use that sorrow to turn away from God can't find a blessing with the feelings of being alone. It's determined very much on whether we will trust God even when we seem all alone or turn away from him, whether or not we can benefit from it. Loneliness, then, is a time to stand in our faith, not retreat in fear. The other thing I wanted to share with you this morning is that you're not the only one struggling. Loneliness isolates us. It makes us feel like no one else understands what we're going through. And you know something, it's such a common condition, there's a lot of people around you all the time that know exactly what you're going through. They know that isolation from their own lives. They know that feeling of despair. They know that feeling of, of being apart from others. Not being able to, to share the love that you have to share with others. The truth is that you're surrounded with people who are going through that pain. And in some cases, the pain that others are experiencing is worse than that which you've experienced. You know, we can see that in almost every area of life. No matter how we're suffering, if we look around, there's usually someone who is suffering worse in that same area. And that's true with loneliness. I mean, it might have taken us down a long ways, but there are people who've known loneliness in a deeper way than I have experienced in my own life. And even Jesus, when he walked this earth, was tempted in all ways as we are. He knew the struggles with loneliness as well. He knew times when all others deserted with him. No one would stand with him. And on the cross, he even experienced the absence of the Father in his life when he took upon himself our sins. And there he utters maybe the most lonely words in human history. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's a lonely cry that Jesus made there. If the enemy can make us believe that there is truly no one else who can understand. It will tempt us to shut out other people, even those whom God has provided for us, to support us and encourage us. 
The danger of being isolated from others is that in isolation, others won't be able to help us with the truth when we need it the most. They won't be able to share with us what we need to hear in those times of loneliness. And if we become isolated, we will go toward bitterness and depression and hardness of heart and regret. Ultimately, it makes us less useful in the kingdom of God. And so we must remind ourselves of this truth. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Only Jesus can enter into our pain. Only he can know what we're going through completely. He is the one who sees inside us. So we must resist the temptation to withdraw by first realizing that Christ alone can fill the deep holes left by the heartaches of life. And when we look to him, it, it opens up it opens us up to the healing power of the fellowship of God's people and the comfort given through the body of Christ because that's why he gave us the church in the first place, so that we wouldn't be going through this alone, so that we would have other people surrounding us, lifting us up, encouraging us, bringing out the best in us. Steel sharpens steel. And these same people who are going through loneliness in our midst have been surrounded by people who can share in that and encourage in that and help us to make us through that. Jesus doesn't encourage us from the sidelines. He comes alongside of us. Often he carries us if we turn to him. John chapter 16, verses 23, uh, rather, 32, got the numbers turned around backwards there, 32 and 33, behold, an hour is coming it already has come for you to be scattered, each to his own home, and to leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. This morning, in conclusion... If you're struggling with loneliness, hold on to the fact that the Lord is with you, whether you can feel him there or not. And as you rely on him in faith, he will go alongside of you and lead you out of that darkness. Remember that God has not left you to go it alone. He has made you part of his church. And others here can identify with your loneliness and they can encourage you and equip you to make it through. This morning, no matter what you're struggling with in your life, we have an answer in Jesus. And that's why we have an invitation time. If you'd like to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for the first time, obey him in the waters of baptism, you can make that decision this morning. If you'd like you re to renew your commitment to live for him, if you'd like to have somebody to pray with or talk with about something which is concerning you, maybe loneliness, maybe something else, we're going to have men up front here that will be willing to talk with you throughout as well. We're going to enter into a time of prayer and meditation in which you can make this decision. Let's begin now with prayer. Father, we thank you so much that even though we know trial and hardship in this world, even though sometimes we experience the pain of loneliness, Lord, that you are with us always, that you never leave us or forsake us, we're thankful, Lord, to know that you are nearby, even when we can't experience that in our person. We ask just now, Lord, that as we bow before you, that you might work your Holy Spirit upon our hearts and move us to conviction to make the decisions that we need to make. We ask in this period of meditation, Lord, that we might draw close to you. Search us, O Lord, know our hearts. See what things need to be committed to you. And this we pray in your son Jesus' name.
Amen.